On Pleasant Street in Brockton, Squad A firefighters respond to emergencies from this 138-year-old firehouse. This building itself was wired by Thomas Edison. He had a shop right in the street, right behind us. First electronically operated fire station in the country. In Norwell, a piece of Jewish history destroyed by Nazi Germany is painstakingly recreated over 10 years. And on a windy morning in the Hyde Park section of Boston, the legacy of the 54th Regiment is celebrated. Black soldiers fought in all of America's wars. Tonight, we're on the hunt for hidden history. This is Chronicle on WCBB Channel 5. Brockton, City of Champions, a term associated with its sports legends, but it certainly applies to its firefighters as well. When you're a firefighter, you never know what you're going to get into. The rich history of Brockton's bravest is on display here at the city's Fire Museum, where we find retired Brockton Fire Chief Kenneth Galligan. Currently, he serves as president of Brockton's Historical Society. We needed to create something where we could preserve the history of firefighting. These are the breaks. The museum opened in 1990, featuring a piece of fire history which is still proudly on display. Protector 3, tell me about this piece of equipment. This is an actual fire engine that was built in 1856. It served the city of Brockton. It's called a hand tub. At that time, fire companies were run privately and generally for a profit. Basically, the insurance companies would put a plaque on your house if you had insurance. So when these guys showed up, if there was a plaque on the front of the house, they knew they were going to get paid for putting the fire out. The city eventually took over the fire service and the technology greatly improved. From the time you pull that box till the time they're going out the door is between 60 and 90 seconds. This is the same system in place on March 10, 1941, when this box, 1311, was activated in response to a fire at Brockton Strand Theater. By morning, the headlines would report the loss of 12 firefighters, a number that would soon grow to 13 the second largest loss of firefighters due to a building collapse prior to 9-11. Can you tell me a little bit about just how devastating the Strand Fire was to Brockton to lose that many firefighters in a single event? You never want to lose one firefighter, but to lose 13 of them all at once, uh, it was devastating. Today, all that remains of the Strand Theater are memories. It was located on School Street. This is School Street right here. The main entrance to go into the theater was located right there, right next to that fire hydrant. A memorial to those who died here is just a few yards away at City Hall. The names include all four members of Squad A, the truck pictured here the morning after the fire, parked alone in the station, her entire crew lost. Though Squad A was restaffed and continues to this day, the truck in the picture was decommissioned in 1947, sold and lost until now. One day I got a call from a gentleman who collects fire apparatus that wanted to see our museum. He says, you know, I think I might have a fire truck that belongs to Brockton. We researched the serial numbers and sure enough, it's the Brockton Squad A. So I told him, if you ever want to sell that truck, you let me know. A year later, he contacted me, so I called the union, and overnight, Local 144 voted to purchase the truck. A grand homecoming celebrated the return of this local treasure. We got our first look when Local 144 arranged a viewing for some descendants of that heroic 1941 crew. The engine parked in the exact same spot it was immortalized in, in the photo from the morning after the Strand Fire. Why is it important to have it back? We truly never forget those that have gone before us. We've been uh, honoring these men, men that were killed in 1941 ever since it happened. So we looked at this as an opportunity to have a piece of history that's important to the city. And it's equally important to the relatives of those lost, people like Rob Moore. I'm related to Dan O'Brien. He was 45 years old at the time in Brockton. What a fraternity. They have been our family and faithful to us for now what will be 81 years this March. 
we were given the honor of a brief ride on this truck that carries so much history. But even more moving was seeing Deborah Walcott and Celeste Natal, the granddaughter and great-granddaughter of Strand firefighter Roy McCarrigan, connect with their history. My grandfather was also a firefighter, and he was eight years old when his father died in the fire, and it really impacted him. To think, he actually sat here and drove it and then never came home. It reminds me of it every time I see them going out in a truck, but, you know, they risk their lives for us. Very cool. And you don't have to go to the Brockton Fire Museum to see a working fire alarm box. There are actually still more than 100 on the streets of Brockton. Including one in the exact same location that called in the Strand Fire. Back to the Central Fire Station, the one that Thomas Edison wired in 1884. It's on the National Register of Historic Places. There are works for a new station elsewhere in the city. Okay. Up next, Hidden History in Hyde Park.